In the times of ancient Egypt, King Kafa, one of the greatest pharaohs of the fourth dynasty, rose to prominence. Kafa inherited the ambition of his father, King Khufu, and began building a huge pyramid next to his father's pyramid on the Giza Plateau. His legacy was not limited to this pyramid only, but extended to include the Great Sphinx, which stands as an eternal guardian of the desert. These dazzling constructions reflect engineering genius and a deep belief in the afterlife, embodying the power and wisdom of the pharaohs in their design and construction. Sphinx. The Great Sphinx is located near the Great Pyramid and is believed to be part of Khufu's funerary complex. This huge limestone statue has the shape of a recumbent lion with the head of a human and is believed to have been painted in the original colors. There is still controversy over the identity of the king who ordered the construction of the Sphinx between Khufu, his son Jedifa, and his younger son Kafa. Kafa the Sphinx, and Menkau. Kafa to 558 to 53 to BC, and the Sphinx. After Khufu's death, he was succeeded by Jedifa, who ruled for a short period, and called himself son of Ra. After him, came Kafa, who is believed to have built the second largest pyramid at Giza. Known as the Pyramid of Kafa, part of Kafa's funerary complex, the famous Sphinx represents the body of a reclining lion, with the head of a king. Although some scholars believe that the Sphinx may have had a face similar to Khufu's, the prevailing belief is that its face is that of Kafa. Kafa's Pyramid and Funerary Complex The Pyramid of Kafa is the second largest pyramid in Giza and is considered a miniature version of the Pyramid of Khufu, with some differences. Kafa's Funerary Complex includes a temple containing numerous statues and reliefs that display mastery of architecture and sculpture. It is believed that Kafa was associated with the god Horus, as the Sphinx was seen as a representation of the king, as the god Harmat Horus on the horizon. Menkau to 532 to 503 BC, and his pyramid. After Kafa's death, Menkau, Kafa's son, ruled, who built a pyramid smaller than the pyramids of his father and grandfather. Menkau's pyramid and its funerary complex are among the smallest pyramids in Giza, reflecting an important development in the history of the Old Kingdom and one of the reasons for its collapse. The resources needed to build larger pyramids were not available in Menkau's time, but he used what was available to create a pyramid complex worthy of his own. Work system and building pyramids to build the pyramids the challenges of transporting huge blocks of stone was one of the major obstacles faced by ancient pyramid builders. There are several ideas and theories about how to move these huge blocks, whose weight ranges from several tons, such as the use of ramps, mechanical methods, and the limestone concrete hypothesis. 1. Slopes and skis. Oh, the Egyptians used ramps and sleds to transport huge blocks from quarries to the construction site. These sleds were protected by a layer of water to facilitate siding. Oh, archaeological evidence indicates the use of slopes in building pyramids. And this appears in the Great Pyramid of Giza and some other pyramids. 2. Mechanical methods. Oh, some theories suggest using simple machines to lift and move stones such as a crib-like machine over which blocks could be rolled. Oh, these machines were used to move small blocks by a small number of workers. 3. Limestone concrete hypothesis. Oh, material scientist Joseph Davidowitz suggested that the pyramids may not have been carved from large pieces of stone, but rather used soft limestone as poured concrete. Oh, ground limestone is used and mixed with water clay and ash to produce a material similar to concrete that can be poured into molds. 4. Nova Pyramid Building Experiment Oh, in 1997, 
an experiment was conducted to build a pyramid using traditional methods. A few copper tools and hammers were used to carve and move the stones. Oh, this experiment showed that it is indeed possible to build huge structures using primitive methods and a small number of workers. Given this evidence and theories, it appears that building the pyramids was a process that required technology and careful planning to move and assemble massive blocks. Archaeological evidence supports the idea that ramps and simple tools were used to transport stone. But debate continues regarding the advanced technology and techniques used in that ancient period, the end of the 4th dynasty and the beginning of the 5th dynasty. Kings of the late 4th dynasty were diverting enormous resources into building their tombs and funerary complexes. After Menkau's rule, the 4th dynasty ended and the 5th dynasty began with fewer promises than it had been. The 5th dynasty continued to build sun temples and devote more resources to the worship of the god Ra, reflecting a shift in power from king to priests. The pyramids as an integrated group. The Giza pyramids form a collection of complete architectural monuments, surrounded by the tombs of the royal family and the elite. This hierarchical arrangement reflects the power and social ranking of the time. While only the tombs of high-ranking officials were decorated, most of these officials were members of the large royal family, reflecting the concentration of power and authority on kinship. The fifth dynasty was known as the dynasty of the Sun Kings, because many of the kings' names were named after the god Ra. Later, the first three of these kings Yuzakov, Sahya, and Neferakekakai were honored by being designated as gods in the story of the birth of kings from the Westcar Papyrus. The dynasty began with King Yuzakov to 498 to 491 BC, but the woman known as Kunkais, who is believed to have been Menkau's daughter, features prominently in inscriptions of the period as mother of the kings of Upper and Lower Egypt, although its details are still not fully known. Yuzakov is famous for building the Sun Temple in Abusa, and this temple marked an important turning point in the role of the king beginning in the 4th dynasty and ending Giza as a cemetery for kings. The people worshipped the sun god Ra directly through the priests, and the role of the king as a direct representative of the god receded. After Yuzakov, his son Sahir to 490277 BC took over, who built his funerary complex at Abusa near the Temple of the Sun. Sahir was an effective ruler organizing the first Egyptian expedition to the land of Punt, negotiating important trade agreements with other countries, and among his most important achievements was his relationship with the land of Punt, which became a major source of Egypt's valuable resources. Sahya also pioneered the use of columns, with tops resembling palm leaves in architecture, and these columns later became a building standard in Egypt. As time passed and the luster of the old kingdom declined, the secret of building the pyramids gradually began to disappear among the sand and oblivion. The era of the pyramid builders ended mysteriously, leaving behind unanswered questions and secrets yet to be revealed. The pyramids, those majestic edifices, remained tall in the face of time, but they carried in their silence the mystery of the end of their era. They have become symbols of forgotten greatness and mysteries waiting to be deciphered. While the voices of workers and craftsmen faded, the pyramids of Giza remained guarding the remains of the glories of a bygone era, carrying deep within them secrets that have not yet been revealed. Don't forget to press the like button, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell button to receive all new updates.